Oh, we're starting? <coughs> Anna Karowitz was a 14-year-old girl. She wore long black braids and loved to play softball with her 11th grade girls team at Rock Hill High School. One day, Anna had a visit with Dr. DeHyde that changed her life. On November 8, 2005, she found out she was pregnant. She was horrified and felt ashamed, and as if the pregnancy alone wasn't enough, she found out that day she had herpes. Although Anna enjoyed being a teenage girl, one day in October of 2004, Anna made a very grown-up decision that had very big consequences that would change her life forever. Today, girls and boys, I would like, to, I would like for you to throw away the idea that it is okay to have sex as long as you use a condom or that it's okay to have sex before marriage. Sex before marriage has many surprising consequences, and today I want to enlighten you on them and persuade you against sexual activity before marriage. Deciding to have sex before marriage is a very adult process. The book, Mom, I'm Pregnant, written by Bev O'Brien on pages 161 and 162, describes it best. Mom, I'm pregnant. These three words, uttered by an unmarried girl to her parents, the emotions are unleashed are far from simple. Anger, guilt, anxiety, and bitterness, just to name a few. While it is true that it does take a boy and a girl to make a baby, most of the responsibility falls on the girl. Anna, like most girls, was in a relationship and thought undoubtedly that she was in love. Anna's parents wondered if they should encourage the two youngsters to marry in hopes of making a wrong situation right. However, even more horrifying statistics found in Sex and Sensibility, written by Deborah Rothman on pages 49, is that one in four marriages end in divorce, but 50% of marriages involving teenagers fail, and 90% of teenage marriages prompted by pregnancy are destroyed. If you're wondering what happened to Anna's boyfriend, I am so glad you asked. <laughs> Gary was a basketball superstar in their high school with hopes of making it to the NBA. He loved Anna, but after the pregnancy, things changed. Although Anna knew that Gary was the first boy she had ever been sexually intimate with, he denied giving her herpes. Herpes is a sexually transmitted disease as is syphilis, gonorrhea, and chlamydia, and even worse, AIDS. Like AIDS, you cannot go to the doctor and get a shot or take a pill to cure it. There is no cure. You cannot always see herpes, as I have prepared a visual slide for you to view later after the speech. Gary did acknowledge the baby, but while Anna dropped out of school in the 11th grade, Gary went on to college and continued to play basketball. He had a life. But as for Gary, Anna, and the baby were history. Before Anna had given birth to their baby girl, Gary and Anna's parents had even suggested abortion as a way to make this wrong situation right. As summed up well in the book, How to Help Your Teenager Postpone Sexual Activity, written by Marion Howard, some adolescents view and use abortion as a method of birth control. They are unaware of the painful consequences abortion and abortion also brings, especially the emotional depression it brings. They do not realize how much more difficult the reality of abortion will be. They just view abortion as an easy solution to an unplanned pregnancy. Girls, just imagine how it would feel to keep your body pure and virtuous and allowing a, a boy who was pure and virtuous to find you and how sacred and wholesome your courtship would be. If you waited until your wedding night to give yourselves one to another, no worries of unplanned or unwanted pregnancies, no sexually transmitted diseases or having to give up being a teenager would ever be a reality for you. I know peer pressure is very real, but if you should find yourself in a compromising situation with a guy in a relationship, he may have some pressuring lines to get you to have sex. He may say, if you love me, you would do it. And you would say, well, if you love me, you will wait. 
The God may also say, if you don't want to do it, I probably won't see you anymore. And you should say, ladies, well, if that's the way you feel, I will miss having you in my life, but I can live without you. He may also say that it's just part of growing up. But girls, I hope you all have, under, have understood that having sex does not mean you are grown. But grown up means deciding what you believe and then never compromising those beliefs for anyone or anything. I have prepared a visual slide for you. Teenage girls should have sex, should not have sex <laughs> until marriage. <laughs> Oh, okay. These are sexually transmitted diseases. I would like for you to come after this, um, after the speech, and read each one, how it is contracted, and if there is a cure. I had also designed a slide to show you what each sexually transmitted disease looks like, and sometimes you cannot see it. Shocking statistics of STDs contracted by girls who have premarital sex. And lastly, these are the benefits of waiting until marriage to have sex. Marriage is a, net, a mutually committed relationship with many benefits. And marriage allows for emotional stability, companionship, love and trust. A faithful marriage wherein both partners are monogamous, alleviates the worry of sexually transmitted diseases, people live longer lives, are physically healthier, and are wealthier. Thank you very much. <laughs>